So there we have it. It took me an hour and 50 minutes to do that. Oh, that's insane. Storm, earth, and fire. Heed my call. Okay, this is what's going to be playing during the credits. Like, this was... A <laughs> Look at that, it's funny. This was a, um, quite a different departure from the previous Warcraft games. Now, they always had some sort of a, a story element to it. Hey, as a Pandarian. They always had a bit of a story element to it, but for the most part, the story that you experienced in the Warcraft games came from the manuals, where it tells some sort of backstory, or, or it sets up the entire thing, talks about Medivh, Gul'dan, whatever. And then there was a little, little story bits that were in the mission briefings, like, oh, this is what's going on, and this is what you have to do, but it didn't really have any sort of character-focused anything. It's the first one that really pushed a lot of story going on in the, in the, uh, during the gameplay, during the missions, character dialogue, all that kind of stuff. And that's, part of that, I guess, has something to do with the sort of difference in ways games were made in the early 2000s when this was made, or with the mid-90s when Warcraft 1 and 2 were done. The, uh, it was more expected to be done there, and, and it's something you saw in, like, in the Command & Conquer games uh, more and more and all that kind of stuff. And, <laughs> and there has never been a game that I've played where it was more obvious they were trying to set up for some sort of a sequel. Now, there was no Warcraft 4. There probably never will be. But World of Warcraft came about as a sort of... as a sort of... Um, not, I, I, it's hard to call it a sequel. It's just a game that takes place in the same universe. And, because you're not playing... It's not an RTS. It's an MMO. Where you run around adventuring, killing things, questing, all that kind of crap. So there isn't any of this um, team management or any of that kind of stuff. At least not the same way that you saw in these games here. What the fuck? <laughs> and it is kind of a shame that since World of Warcraft is so popular... And it has essentially hijacked the story. Any development in the story goes on in World of Warcraft that doesn't really leave the door open for any more RTS games. And that's kind of a shame, because this is one of the most popular RTSs. And it, it just, uh, oh jeez, look at that battle. Oh, bodies are disappearing. <laughs> I do think it was, it does kind of muddle the story up a bit, as every, every one of these games ends up doing. The reality is that every time they made a sequel or they expanded the World of Warcraft game, they had a tendency to retcon elements of the previous game's stories. Not just, um, like, oh, this is something new that you didn't know about. Like, oh, that, well, that, that really wasn't the thing. Like, uh... In the first game, there was it was part of the story that the war between the orcs and the humans was going on for something like ten years before the start of the game. Going on for ten years, but the orcs didn't really have uh, much of a chance. They were getting their asses kicked up until that point when a new war chief took over, and that was Blackhand. Blackhand, when it came time to do Warcraft 2, was sort of like downgraded as far as a far as a, like, what he was. Like, he was, um, considered to be like, oh, he was just a puppet. Gul'dan was the real badass. And then it was, um, they get to Warcraft 3, World of Warcraft, eventually, and they change that whole ten-year time lane down to being a much shorter period of time, and Blackhand was in command before then, but Gul'dan was really the guy behind the, the man behind the man, but, oh, no, Gul'dan was really just sort of a, um, a puppet for the Burning Legion, or from Medivh, or somebody, whoever they decided to at the start of that point. But it was definitely a, um... Definitely makes it difficult to keep track of all of this kind of stuff. And they continue doing that in World of Warcraft, discontinuing, uh, storyline aspects that they had done in the, um, 
earlier, like parts of that game even, because it's been going on for like 12 years now, and the Warcraft series has been going on for over 20. So it, it's, I guess it can be difficult to constantly think of new things to keep inserting into it without, without just doing what they ended up having to do and overwriting everything that they had done. I just wish they maybe they pulled it off a little bit better. The character of Arthas, I think, uh, as the Lich King, the character of Arthas is probably the best one, best character in this game here. As he was a guy that you could tell he was a little unhinged to begin with, but he was overall a good person, fighting on the on the side of the humans and all that kind of stuff. And you could see him like slowly slipping away into insanity, and then eventually he becomes the Death Knight, which uh, just destroys Lauderon and then brings back the Burning Legion Archimon guy. And then it was oh oh shit. <laughs> And it just keeps ramping him up, and now he is the is the Lich King, and that's um, just ramping up that guy. And he, essentially, I'd figure he could think of him as sort of being the main antagonist of the series up until the Wrath of the Lich King expansion for World of Warcraft, where he was killed. And they sort of went back to the whole. Um, eventually, found around found their way back to the whole Burning Legion side character of Illidan is also a pretty interesting character here because he was a um, sort of a, I don't want to call him a tragic villain or a tragic hero or anything like that because in a kind of a way he's sort of um, an opportunist kind of person taking the side that he feels is the most beneficial to him at the time fighting against the Burning Legion during the War of the Ancients actually taking their side for a little bit coming back over to the to the Night Owl side, then he gets out of his cage in this game, and he goes and he fights against the Burning Legion until he's exiled from his people again for making some bad decisions, I'd have to say. <laughs> although that really had something, although that was kind of a necessary thing for it, the Burning Legion's assault to fail. Apparently killing Tychondrius was kind of important. But uh, then you go and uh, as a child, that's a creepy looking kid. Potato faced freak. The <laughs> But then he goes and he takes the side of the Burning Legion. Uh, probably because he was, he was sort of afraid of what would happen to him. Uh, or, I don't know, maybe he had some delusions of power at that point. Then you go and see him chain trading sides again because he feels it's in his best interests. Or uh, really for Taronda, I guess, he did it. And then he finds himself fighting against the Burning Legion, trying to take Outland. Then he's on the Burning Legion side again when Kill Jaden confronts him. And really, it's kind of a funny thing. Look at that last mission. It was essentially two bad guys fighting it out, jockeying for position in this sort of um, struggle for power in Azeroth. You have the, the Burning Legion, which can't really manifest itself properly in Azeroth, so it's relying on Illidan, the Naga, and the Blood Elves, which um, Kael'thas at that point probably doesn't feel like he really has a choice but to fall in with Illidan. Fighting against the Undead Scourge, which is obviously far from good. So, like, either way, you got to think about it. Like, whichever one wins, it's kind of bad. Like, the Scourge winning... The Lich King gets set free, the Lich King's powerful, the Lich King can go and fuck some shit up in Azeroth. Alright, well, well, the only people who could stop him at that point, because the Night Elves freaking retreated, Lauderon was destroyed. Uh, everybody, everybody else, the Orcs are on the wrong side of the planet. Nobody can really stand up to them except for the Burning Legion, but the Burning Legion, they want to destroy the fucking world! So, <laughs> There's no good ending there, I guess. So the, the credits ending? I probably DirectX video copyright something something. I didn't see any high quality video. Uh, well, the credits are gonna end pretty soon here. I'm gonna let them run until the end. And I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off here. If if you liked what I did here, I 
played quite a number of games on this YouTube channel. Feel free to check any of those out. Most of them aren't RTSs, though. And it's over. Boom. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, goodbye.